Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We're going to start by looking at two maps. One on the right shows the last 30 days of precipitation anomalies, and that comes from the CPC data. And the one on the left shows the current GRACE. That's a satellite. Uh, this is a root zone soil moisture drought indicator. And I want to put this in perspective of last year. And we're going to look at a time series of Mutter Gross in just a few moments, but a couple of things, things to point out here. You know, the driest conditions over the last 30 days have focused on center north with better precipitation in pockets across the south. It is not to say there aren't some places. I've seen some videos here in Rio Grande do Sol of places that have been extremely dry. It is important to notice, though, that as you move toward the Andes Mountains here, right into this section and then over toward Buenos Aires, there are uh, regions here showing up drier as of late. But as you get over toward like Santa Fe, getting farther to the east in Argentina's growing area, there have been, there's been lately some better precipitation. But what we need to do is we need to take this and put it into perspective. We're going to do that two ways. The first way is to look at a year ago. So these are the same maps ready, but last year at this time. You can see that our drought conditions were not quite as bad. They were farther to the north and there was wetter conditions as you got over into parts of Parna, Rio Grande do Sol, and southern, or excuse me, uh, Mato Grosso do Sol, and then southern uh, Mato Grosso. Overall, compared to that, it was also looking very similar across parts of Argentina uh, this year as was last year, except when you look at the soil moisture data. So watch this again. This is this year, okay? And this is last year. So much better right in through this corridor a year ago, which is, if I, if I can just kind of paint a very productive region, it is this area right in through here. So it's important to just keep this into perspective of, of how much the year-on-year -year change has been. Now to expand that out and go much farther, I'm going to focus again on Mato Grosso right here. Now in that area, I decided to expand my analysis to include every year since 1981. And when you look at this, the smooth line in through here is the climatological normal, okay, for the rate of accumulation of precipitation. The bottom of this yellow envelope is 2020. Now, when I look at this for this particular region, that means I can't find a year. Now, this is using CPC data only, but I can't find a year in the last 40 that has been this dry. And so it now becomes a question of were the rains timed well? Because, yes, we can see that we're missing out here on, on in some locations, over 20 inches of rainfall. But it was all about the timing of that precipitation. And that is a very difficult thing to get out of South America, given that you know, we don't have this prolific rain gauge network combined with, um, you know, a, a, a wide covering radar network. So we'll rely on the CPC data for, for right now. Thinking about temperatures, let's just take our attention to the map that's over on the right, looking at the last 30 days. I'm trying to pick up on some heat stress. Overall, we have seen the central north growing areas here picking up on an average of about a two to five degree Fahrenheit. Now, this is in Fahrenheit uh, temperature anomaly. And at times when it was dry, it was very hot. We can see that there's only been a couple of notable cooler time periods here compared to normal when going back over the last 60 days. So from the end of October now to the end of December. So they've been favoring much above average temperatures overall in this area compared to normal. It has been cooler in Argentina, cooler in southern Brazil compared to normal as well. So that gives us an idea about the heat stress. From there, let's get into the forecast. Now we were anticipating into this area throughout this, this next week, better rainfall. In fact, some places in there picking up an additional one to maybe two inches of rain uh, compared to normal. But uh, over the next five days, at least parts of Argentina, it's kind of colored in this whole region over the next five days is not expected to pick up any precipitation at all. And what you see coming in here, this is really coming in uh, after we get past uh, the next five days, but still very dry in southern Brazil and parts of Argentina. Now, a critical thing that's been changing in the week two forecast, which is over here on the right, we've maintained the drier bias in the central north regions, but the southern regions have been drying out, and this pocket of Argentina has gone over from what had once been forecast wetter to now drier. Uh, Buenos Aires province is showing up with still a wet bias, and Argentina's northern growing areas into Paraguay is still showing up on the wetter side of things. So uh, this is a kind of a critical time period to be watching these forecasts here, and that's what the next two weeks looks like. A couple of things to think about in the pattern. 
We have been building our Antarctic oscillation uh, back up toward positive values here. And it is expected over the next at least week to 10 days to, to stay in that vicinity uh, with these positive values. You can see that down here in the forecast, that was the seven day. Here's the 10 day and the 14 day keeping it there. Now, when you look at the correlation with precipitation rate, that tends to be drier down in Argentina and wetter to the north. So when I think about this, uh, that brings me back to this map saying, well, I would expect to see better drying in this area if the Arctic Antarctic oscillation continues to dominate because there's a pretty strong correlation with that. And then you get up here, this is a 0.3 to 0.4 positive correlation coefficient with precipitation. But I'm wondering if what might be suppressing the precipitation here, see it's drier than normal. I wonder if that has something to do with what's going on in the, in the Pacific Ocean. So our La Nina is making a big surge with trade winds here right now, but warming on its backside here over toward South America. We can see those strong trade winds in these blue uh, to green colors here. So that's right in through this region. And it's meeting some westerly winds here. And therefore, we're going to get some strong rising motion, as you can see in this particular area. But in general, we have subsidence here and subsidence as we go back over toward, uh, you know, the Atlantic and this part of, of Brazil. So thinking about that, what is the MJO doing in relationship to that? Well, it's, it's a mess over the next month. You can see that it's diving into null space. And if anything, it's trying to maybe come back out over here, maybe into phase three, four. But I, I mean, it's, it's not a lot of confidence there if it's going to do that. But if that's what the European is suggesting, well, look over here, phase three and phase four, we tend to be drier a bit to the north, especially if we get over to phase five. So if it comes out and keeps going back over to phase five, where it is favored a lot uh, over the last 60 days, that would be critical for giving them a very dry time period uh, in January, which would be detrimental to the crop in Brazil's central and northern growing areas. So where this gets me to is to look at these two maps, which show us the GFS extended forecast through January. Uh, and this one shows you what the European is suggesting. So both models are drier north. Can you see it there? With a wet corridor that stretches right in through here. Now, the GFS brings in just tons of rain farther to the south, and it's not in the European. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'm going to have to start looking at model performance statistics here now that we're going to be start getting some of this data as a live feed to give you some better perspective on this. But I want you to see the maps now. We'll have that discussion in more detail later. But to finish this up, just a little bit of a long range outlook again. Using only my La Nina analogs, we do anticipate this area uh, showing up with wetter conditions, with drier here and drier to the south. And that's been echoed in the latest January, February, March IRI multi-model forecast with drier over Argentina in pockets of southern Brazil with near normal precipitation in through here, but drier in this area. So this kind of just gives us a complete picture here on what we're expecting moving forward throughout January, February, and March as the growing season marches on in South America. So hope you like the second video here, the separate video on South America. Maybe just save you a little bit of time so you can just tone in on the things you're interested in. But with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you all have a great uh, Christmas. I look forward to talking again next week. Thank you.